she is now gone over the top a couple of times and I ask people why, and the answer is, well, she's got a kid, maybe life's different. The other one is, for the first time ever, she's known to be the goat. It's really hard to win two more, isn't it? When she's trying to catch someone to be the best ever. All of a sudden, the challenge has gone up to probably above very hard. <laughs> to as hard as you can. So do you see by starting to identify things and even in your practices, what are things that make me nervous? How can I find out how to get some help with it? Ah, oh, if I'm not feeling good, who are the people I need to talk to and trust? And when you're in this zone, you make system two decisions. You make good decisions. By the way, when they ask kids to evaluate each other after a game, if you're dealing with that, please, please, please do anything you can. Kids aren't experts. They spend the whole time worrying about themselves in the game and then they ask other people to tell each other and again, to finish off, I need to show you this. This is caring, bold, driven. This is all the things that make champions. And most people don't know where they fit on a curve. They don't know how caring they are. I've had many of us tell me they're very caring. <laughs> <laughs> they are, you might be the most caring anaesthetist, but anaesthetist compared to a GP, not on the curve. Well, they're right down the other end. And think about that with professions. Think about who goes into academics versus who becomes practitioners. All of that is really important, understanding that with people. And surgeons can't be incredibly caring. Oh, I'm kidding, I'm caring. I don't really like her. All right, they have to be dispassionate. Psychopath. There's an orthopod here, he's very upset. He's okay, Jenny. Council. Uh, <laughs> Surgeons are actually uh, really well adjusted psychopaths. No offense. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That's not saying they're bad. That's saying they can do their job of cutting up someone on a table really well and dispassionately in system two thinking. The difference between that and a psychopath is they do it with absolute enjoyment <laughs> and trying to, and try to, they're not doing it for their career, they're doing it for how they are. So, again, this is actually profiling. And when we profile, we ask, I don't know if I've got it in here, a whole lot of questions. And I ask four pages of questions to kids and we put orange and yellow across. Orange means, yes, that's good, keep doing it. Yellow means, actually, we've got to work on that one. If you want to be good or if you want to be healthier. Two different reasons. So on there it says, I like to be centre of attention. True for us, well, sometimes. If you say true, your chances are make it at an elite level or even as a surgeon is actually fine. If you say sometimes, oh, when I'm operating or when I'm on the field, yes, that's also good. But if you actually go false and you have to be in front of people, it will stress you. It will challenge you. So that doesn't mean you can't change, but we're going to start small. Do a talk in front of three people. <laughs> when you first operate, you probably, it's interesting, we watched, have you watched The Nick? Oh, it's an amazingly good thing to look at the first surgeries. It's a series, and it's great. Like, they didn't want black people, black guy, who, even though it was a great thing, because black people aren't as good as surgeons. You know, like, they come up with all of these opinions and everything, but again, it ties it together. Um, on there, for instance, one of the things I have is, making a mistake doesn't bother me if I've tried my hardest. Who would put true or sort of sometimes on that? Oh, here. Be honest. Making a mistake doesn't bother me if I've tried my hardest. Honestly, that is a real problem for people. If you've tried your hardest, and it's moderately Jenny hard, I talk to kids, then you actually have to go, we need to learn to get over it. Because again, imagine you've got a kid and they're building Lego. They're trying their hardest and it falls over. And you go, oh, that wasn't good enough. They won't do it again. They'll feel terrible. And if you were doing that to yourself, you are shrinking yourself. So again, it's how do we do that then? All of these have activities to do to help you grow with them. But again, when you're not feeling good, did you know life lacks colour? Life goes to black and white when people are feeling not feeling good. So what do we do about it? We add friends, we add colour to our room, add colour to our hair, add colour to our clothes, take the dog for a walk, make sure our vitamin D levels. So all of these things have behavioural things that go with it. And this is very quickly how we're going to get the time. Based on thinking styles. Ah. Welcome to my world of tiggers and eels, and it's really funny, a guy I found did a TED talk on this and I've never ever seen it, and he did it five years later than I was doing it, but I'm going, wow, it's an interesting worldwide people would say think. Because everyone, a lot of kids know this is an archetypal type that, all I'm saying is that's a psychological world curve, and you need to know where you fit on it, and I want people to, superheroes by the way, are caring, 
supervillains don't have the caring for others. They do all the other things. You never find a brown superhero. <coughs> all right? They'll be colourful. They'll be bold. And I need to teach you to be colourful and bold when you want to be. So on the outside, people look like this. To each other, people judge you on what you look like, how old you are, all of this, and they think that goes with resilience. On the inside, tiggers bounce. Why am I a tigger? I hadn't even talked to you. I, l I lucked into a mum who told me, you're really good. Oh, Jen, you're down 5-0. You can still win. That's luck. I didn't put in for a mum like that. Unlike one of my friends who had a mum who scolded her when things went wrong. And I, went, I didn't know that until I was 22. I thought everyone had a mother and father like mine. Pretty interesting, isn't it? What you see is all there is. Remember? <laughs> the world's not like that. So again, I'm a tigger. I bounce. Tigers growl and punish others. They'll bounce but they're actually doing it by actually telling others off. Eeyores worry. And these Eeyores actually worry so much, but they've been used to having a tiger parent, so when things go wrong, they expect to be punished. And what does that look like when you're playing? This is cognitive behavioural therapy, and stupid psychologists call it therapy. What should we call it? Training. Because if you call it training, everyone does it. If you call it therapy, people think there's something wrong with them. There's not. Psychological improvement is the same as everything else. It takes learning and it takes practice of what to do and how to do that. So, I'll give you an idea what it looks like. I'm a tigger. I won an important game. I played well. I knew I could. I'm really capable. Confident, pride, walk tall. Some tiggers are humble. Tigers especially will be arrogant. Joy, celebration, and afterwards you'll see me jump around the dance floor or sitting in a chair going, oh, that was a good game. When I'm jumping on the dance floor, everyone goes, Jenny, drunk again. And then my friends go, Jenny doesn't drink. That's her. All right, I'm a tigger. I bounce. I don't need anything else. It's just out of how I've grown up, which is luck. Need to win an important game. I will play well. I know I can. I'm really capable. Excitement, anticipation, and before a game, I want the attention. I want you to come watch me. I want you to come watch my game. I'm feeling good. I walk tall. I can talk because I don't have a dry mouth. And I have good butterflies before a game. No kids ever know this. It just happens to be what happens to them. So again, once you expose them to these ideas, because Eeyores can be better players. Eeyores can be technically much better players, but in a big game, it won't hold up quite the same. So Eeyores, one important game. I thought it wasn't very good today. Oh, I was lucky I made so many mistakes. They remember their mistakes. They're already doing that. Relief, pride, maybe guilt. Walk a little taller and some of them celebrate by drink, drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex. Because they're actually doubting themselves and they're trying to make themselves better even though they've had a win. Need to win an important game. I hope I play well. I don't want to make too many mistakes. My opponent looks strong. Oh, I hope they have a bad day. Fear, helplessness, dread, and look small. No talk, hide. Heart racing, dry mouth, cold hands, nervous number one, nervous number two since throwing up. Who's seen that in chat rooms that they go into? You have got an anxious team. And here's the interesting thing. If you have an anxious coach, you have a very, very anxious team. Coaches who go out of that flow zone take almost every player with them. So do anxious patterns. So this is where it's really important we teach and they start to learn how to actually stay in it. First of all, by understanding that. Secondly, Lost an important game. I played okay. We are not, Dad. Conditions didn't suit us. We'll win next time. It was all, and Tigers, it was all your fault, Daddy. You <laughs> played really badly. Um, what do we call those things? Parents tell kids not to make them all the time. Excuses. Excuses. Wrong. From now on, people are allowed to make excuses in your life, and you have permission to make an excuse. There's a reason for it in a second. Tigers and Tigers don't like losing. Still, it's just part of not liking losing. Maybe agitated and angry. But next time you play them, we will get them today. And on there I've got, I am so much better prepared than I, I am last time. And I give, every one of my athletes has a fridge magnet. And it says on it, one excuse, two new plans. So the excuse is to externalise it, the new plan is so that you get better next time. And one of the plans can just be get the next one. And the other one might be if you've missed a ground ball, get lower. Or if you missed a shot on goal, Danny, what could they do? Practice. Yeah, or, but during a game, steady, I like that, steady, or it may be lift, or anything like that, so that they actually start not worrying about what just happened, but what they're going to do better next time. So one excuse, two new plans. They were lucky last game, they stick it up the media, they better be better this time. I'm back again, baby, I'm ready to play this week. We may have lost to them last time, but tough. They were terrible, we were just terrible, but we're ready. Now look at what I've written over the side, ready to, because we want to be out there. 
We're not down ourselves. I'm bad. I don't care what the coach tells me. The coach is a bit of an asshole, you see that? By the way, when you have people who are really feeling really bad, actually just together saying that to each other helps. And we have a secret symbol for some athletes. And when they're doing this to each other, they actually know they're being an asshole, don't listen. All right, it's interesting, isn't it? But people don't realise that my job is to make people feel like they're ready to play or they're a valuable human being. And that's teachers, coaches, parents who make people smaller. No one has a right to do that. So, they were lucky. Excitement, want to be there. And by the way, it says there, tigers without empathy are tigers. Tigers can bite and destroy the confidence of others. Be very aware of them. Because these eeyores can be the best. Lost in Borneo, my opponent's too good for me. I made so many mistakes, it was my fault. No one thinks I can play. Punish me, I deserve it. Make me do laps. Make me do this. It's not making you better. It makes you very good at doing laps when you do laps, but it doesn't actually work on what you need to work on. Um, guilt, anger at themselves, and that despondency word is the worst. When kids or adults get to a stage where they feel like they can't control something, that is when we're starting to do the depression stuff, without a doubt. Withdraws, loses self-confidence, and then, even when you're trying to say good things, because their heads are like this, nothing gets in. It gets stuck, and they can't remember instructions. When you are anxious, you forget what you're being told. When you're feeling bad, you don't remember things, like your keys before you go to the dentist. All things like that, and this all works because it fits together. They drink, they have sex, they take drugs, or they gamble because they are actually doubting themselves. Now imagine if you're a footballer and all anyone wants to talk to you about is football and people have to write things in the paper all the time and social media is going at you, even when you're being told to be resilient, you can't avoid it sometimes. And this is what's really bad because they start to go, I'm terrible. And the answer is, once they learn from me, all of those people don't deserve an opinion. They haven't worked hard enough. It's easy to write anything on social media. They don't deserve it. They can write it, but don't, they do not deserve to write anything about you because they do not know what, how hard you're working, what you're doing. So again, with that, next time we play them, my opponent's too good, I don't want to make mistakes, I was hopeless last time. Fear, dread, embarrassment, and they're back to not feeling good, dry mouth, cold hands, and in fact, over the side, they will be often injured, they won't recover quickly, and they will be reluctant to be out there. Because if you're going to be assessed on that and feeling terrible, what's the easiest place to be? I'm happy I'm on the bench. I'm happy I'm injured. And people go, we pay you a lot of money. And I'm going, it doesn't make any difference to how their head feels. So again, really important we start to put all this together. And as I put there, Tigger, this is me probably, we're playing seven, eight, nine, nine. In a big game, when the challenge is high, because I'm psychologically a nine, my seven and eight will be a seven and eight. And I will actually make you better and you better. So you want me in the team because I'm going to help someone else. But if you have yours, ten, nine, but they're three. They're doubting themselves in a big game. As the challenge goes up, they get anxious and they don't know what to do about it. So that all goes there. So these are all the things that I would teach. There is so much to learn, but boredom, music, fun, coffee, competition, pain, you came up with them all. Kids do too, but no one ever challenges them, what are we gonna do about it? Flow, we said we can be in there. If you do not have a set in your teams, bang out songs. They have to be songs you love, I love, he loves, we all love, that we go, when we hear them, yeah, we're here. Not too fast, heart and head have to match. If they have songs going, and when people, by the way, are sad, sat or bored, they listen to, woe is me, like this terrible songs, and it makes them feel worse. So again, the banger stuff, my group who are angry or anxious have to listen to 1323 Cruise Radio. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by them. And I actually had one guy write on Facebook one day, I went past these guys listening to this, and I'm going, yeah, they even start doing secret sound and going on with things like that. So very quickly, oh, but, but, but very quickly, I teach breathing with numbers and why to do it because it occupies your head when you're doing that. Uh, music, preparation, uh, lemon changes the taste in your mouth. I would do a whole visualisation with lemon and kids can get their mouth to water. Well, when your mouth is sucking it out, just having Powerade or it's got to be something that's tangy. 
like soft drink or that, that actually makes their mouth go, hmm. They don't have to drink it, but they spit it out. It actually tells your brain you're feeling better. So there's all this psychological stuff that you can use. Visualization before you go to bed. Every one of my athletes have a heart rate monitor. Um, when they're doing the breathing, I make them, if we were doing that now, you'd all have to sit up or do five, 10 star jumps. And we practice the breathing by getting your heart rate up when we're not anxious, when we're doing activity, and then bring it down. Ah, do it again. So every night before you go to bed, ah, with your mum, and then you practice to be calm. We both have a heart rate monitor. We have to do 50 things. First one to get their heart rate back down again by doing that. So we practice that. Um, and um, one excuse, two new plans. All of this makes a difference. You can really help people quickly, but most people don't even know it exists. Um, I took this the other day. This is our uh, gym at home. Um, we have three treadmills because we've always done that because I don't, my knees don't like running on roads, but they're really happy to run on roads. But why is this important? We're watching Star Trek old, old series at the moment. Um, all of those big and knees down the bottom, Mark and I have run to. Now, that was when we were DVDs, now we're straight. You know, in the old days you had to have a DVD out there. But those three things, important, notice we have the subtitles on. You know what it's in making it easy? It's out the back. It's fun because we do series that we like and we put the subtitles on, which makes you read and you don't realise that. The other thing is when I put the footy on, I nearly fall off. And when I go and try and run that fast the next time, I'm going, how was I running like this? But again, it's head and heart. And when I was watching Melbourne play last year and I was worried, for more, I'm thinking, oh, poor Mark, they're losing this. And my heart rate, my watch said, you were getting stressed. So remember, I'm getting stressed, so go back to that thing. What are the two things you could do? Ah, make my head and heart match. So I went for a walk on the treading while watching it, or a run. It matches my head and heart. Or I do the breathing, or I did the third thing is take out the laptop and put on a jigsaw at the same time and distract myself. All of which, everything I'm teaching you, I promise I practice. And that also means when things are hard. So, you're someone who surrounds people, also people who surround you. Don't have, if you have nasty, nasty pasties, I call them grumpy bastards. In the newspaper the other day, they said, grumpy old people. And I'm like, seriously? I'm old, old, I'm old. I, let, I want you to have experienced good people around you. I just don't want anyone to make you smaller. Who's around you? Who are you surrounding? Really easy to do that and watch. If you have a coach and they are making people smaller, the teams won't go very well. It doesn't matter how technically good they are. So make it easy to understand it. I'll talk to you about the laws of the universe, about bell curves. I will give this talk. You can listen to it any time. Please understand challenges of the universe, uh, the challenges, skills and competencies, all of those, linking head and heart. And a word last of all, just working with teams, because I've really noticed this. Get to know people and coaches and their players' names. Uh, know their names. I hate being called, one physio called me buddy.